and Kratos cast himself from the highest mountain in all of Greece. After ten years of suffering, ten years of endless nightmares, it would finally come to an end. Death would be his escape from madness. But it had not always been this way. Kratos had once been a champion of the gods. Slaughtered like animals, the victims lay before him, a reminder of his own past, a past he could never escape. His only solace was the sea, endlessly sailing from one harbor to the next in service to the gods of Olympus. All his hopes rested with them. For no matter how much wine he consumed or how many women he took to his bed, nothing on earth could rid him of the horrors that plagued his mind. Leaving the rotting carcass of the Hydra behind, Kratos set sail once more. His greatest challenge and freedom from his growing madness lay before him in the ancient city of Athens. And with that act, Kratos set in motion the events that would lead to his downfall. And when the oracle looked into his soul, she saw a beast as well as a man. Once a captain in the Spartan army, Kratos had begun his command with only fifty soldiers. But soon his numbers grew to the thousands. His tactics were brutal, but effective. Drunk with power, he was feared by all, except one. His wife was the only one to brave his fury. His desire for conquest knew no bounds, but that which he desired would ultimately consume him. Kronos, the last of the mighty titans, emerged from the desert sands. On his back, Pandora's temple awaited, massive and patient, ready to challenge all who went in search of its guarded treasure. For three days, Kratos climbed the sheer walls of the mountain. He knew he would either recover Pandora's box or perish inside the cursed temple, never to return to the world of man. The wrecked bodies of those who had gone in search of Pandora's box lay before him, and at once Kratos knew who was responsible, for this was not the first time he'd seen the ruined Ares and his minions had left in their wake. Kratos had experienced it firsthand years before. The youngest and boldest captain in the Spartan army, Kratos inspired fierce loyalty in his men. It had always been enough to carry them through any battle. Until this day, the barbarians to the east numbered in the thousands and descended on the Spartans without mercy. The battle lasted mere hours. The discipline and training of the Spartans did little to stem the tide of the merciless barbarians. The soldiers faced a massacre, while their young captain faced the end of his brilliant career and his life. But to Kratos... Victory was worth any price, even his soul. That desperate call for aid would come to haunt Kratos for all his days. Kratos had been in service to the gods long enough to know the harpy had been sent as a warning, a reminder from his former master of the decision that had cost Kratos everything. Had it been that long since he'd almost met his end at the hands of the barbarians? That long since he'd traded everything to save himself. The sky split apart and the god of war stepped through. Descending from Olympus, he saw the makings of a god in a mere mortal. Ares would save Kratos. He would turn him into the perfect warrior, his servant on earth. Only a simple pledge of loyalty was required, and his fate was sealed. As promised, Ares rescued his new disciple, bringing forth the power of a god, destroying those who would slaughter Kratos and his men. As for Kratos, no mere sword and shield would befit the newest servant of the god of war. The blades of chaos, forged in the foulest depths of Hades, 
Once attached, the chains remained so, chained and seared to the flesh, a part of the bearer's body, a permanent reminder of Kratos' pledge. In return, ultimate power. The rage of Ares exploded from within. But soon, he would learn the true cost of such power. A cost too high even for Kratos to pay. The path before Kratos was clear, but still, the memories came rushing back, as familiar and permanent as the blades chained to his wrists. Memories of what he'd done in the name of Ares. Memories of how he'd become a servant to the god of war. A beast, his humanity robbed and replaced only with the will to murder. No one was safe. Entire armies fell before Kratos and the soldiers who followed him on his unending path of conquest, all in the name of his master. Those who offered resistance of any kind were dealt with quickly. Emboldened by the god of war, Kratos' army was ruthless feared throughout the world for their brutality. All that mattered was conquest in the name of Kratos, their great leader, who had become near invincible. He feared nothing. But there was something about this temple, something forbidden. All his instincts told him he should never cross its threshold, never step inside. But the village oracle's warning fell on deaf ears. His ambition would not be denied. All who opposed him would die. In that instant, the glory he had reveled in turned to horror. The image of his two final victims would stay with him for all his days. With that act, Kratos knew he could no longer serve his master. He had but one calling now. The death of Ares. He would murder the god of war. After a thousand years, Pandora's box was at last freed of its confines. Kratos had found the means to destroy the god of war. Far away in Athens, Ares knew Kratos had succeeded in his quest. As the life began to leave Kratos, his thoughts returned to that fateful night. Even in death, the memories, the visions would not fade. For how could he forget spilling the blood of his own family? A cruel trick orchestrated by the god of war. But as the flames consumed the temple, Kratos realized... His true enemy was the god who once saved his life. The same god who had now taken everything from him. And with that curse, all would know him for the beast he had become. His skin white with the ash of his dead family. The ghost of Sparta had been born. And then, in death, he had failed. As the minions of Ares claimed Pandora's box, Kratos' life faded, and his cursed soul was cast into the fires of Hades. And Kratos fell into the underworld, the river Styx beckoning below, the current strong enough to carry even the strongest mortal to his eternal resting place. But Kratos had no intention of resting yet. He intended to live, to return to Earth and complete his quest. Kratos had traversed the desert of lost souls, bested the deadly traps of Pandora's temple, and escaped Hades itself. There was but one task left. After thousands of years, Pandora's box was finally open. The power of the gods unleashed. The nightmares that had haunted Kratos for the past ten years had now taken form and substance. His past stood before him. The battle was not over. The gods, it seemed, had a final gift for Kratos. Kratos had done the impossible. A mortal defeating a god. Ares was no more. 
the city had been saved and would thrive again. The same could not be said for Kratos, for as he sought to rebuild his soul with the help of the gods, the truth was revealed to him. In the end, knowing the visions of his past would never leave him, Kratos made his way to the bluffs overlooking the Aegean Sea. The fate of Kratos was not as it seemed. The gods had other plans. Born aloft like a feather, Kratos found himself risen from the sea and placed on solid earth. And from that point forward, throughout the rest of time, whenever men rode forth to battle for good cause or for evil, they did so under the watchful eye of the man who had defeated a god. They were driven forward by Kratos, the mortal who had become the new god of war. By defeating Ares, Kratos, the once mortal warrior, became the new god of war. However, Kratos soon found himself alone on Olympus, shunned by his fellow gods. But Kratos had no need for the love of petty gods. He had found a new family in the warriors of Sparta, gaining solace from his past in the carnage to battle. Kratos had turned the pain of his memories into hatred, hatred for the gods who had refused to free him from the nightmares of his past deeds. And so he went to Rhodes to deliver the final blow to the besieged city, placing all of his godly power into the weapon and rendered Kratos mortal, vulnerable to the arms of death, bloodied and beaten. He knew that to have any hope of survival, he must retrieve the blade of Olympus. Humiliated before his Spartan army, Kratos dragged himself up from the dirt. As the life drained out of Kratos, the arms of Hades reached out to claim their prize. But there was more resting on Kratos' shoulders than he could know. Kratos was destined to bring about change so severe that he would shake the very pillars of Mount Olympus. His death was something that I could not allow. Fight, Spartan. You are not meant to die here. This is not the end. I am the Titan Gaia, ever-present mother of Earth. I have watched you become a powerful warrior, and I have been with you through all the events of your life, but I can no longer simply watch. We will help you defeat Zeus. Death is an escape, Kratos. You are a warrior of Sparta, not a coward. Only a coward accepts death. Then you must fight. I will show you the way to the Sisters of Fate. Only with their power will you defeat Zeus. You are no longer a god, Kratos. Zeus, Olympus, and the blade which holds all your power will forevermore be out of reach. Your only hope is to find the Sisters of Fate and travel back through time to the moment Zeus betrayed you, for only then will he truly be vulnerable. You have freed Prometheus from the torment of the gods. His flesh has tainted the fires of Olympus and embodied it with the power of the Titans. These ashes will give you great strength, Kratos. Take them within you and use the strength to defeat your enemies. Kratos, behold the island of creation. Home to the Sisters of Fate. Here, the path to your true destiny begins. The island is fraught with danger. It was created to prevent all from reaching the Three Sisters of Fate.
The power of the sisters will allow you to return to that moment when Zeus betrayed and killed you, Kratos, thus changing your fate and the fate of others. Zeus must be stopped, Kratos. The story of revenge has been told before. You know of the mighty titan Kronos. So fearful was Kronos of the Oracle's prediction that his own children would rise against him, that he decided to imprison them all in his belly. Rhea stood by and watched as her children were devoured one by one. But when the time came for the last of her children to be eaten, she was unable to bear another such loss, and devised a trick to save the baby Zeus. Rhea commanded the eagle to seek her son away. He was taken to an island far beyond the watchful eyes of Cronus. It was I who cared for him. It was I who kept him safe. I nurtured his desire to free his brothers and sisters from Kronos. But my foolish act of compassion would haunt the Titans forever. For in sparing Zeus, we allowed him to return to us with vengeance in his heart. He betrayed all of the Titans for the sins of just one. The sins of his father, Kronos. Kratos, to succeed, you will need more help than I can give. My titan brother slumbers deep inside his mountain prison. Go, it is time he was awakened. You do not have enough power to lift the fingers of the great titan. You must free the Pegasus, Kratos. It is your only passage to the Sisters of Fate. Let the rage of the titans fuel your blades, Kratos. Let the rage of the titans drive your blades, Kratos. You must find a way across to the island, Kratos, for there lies your path to the Sisters of Fate. The Steeds of Time, a gift from the great titan Kronos, his unsuccessful attempt to gain the favor of the Sisters of Fate, and change the destiny which the Oracle foretold. You must return to the island, Kratos. Your journey to the Sisters of Fate has only just begun. The relic that you hold, an amulet of the Sisters of Fate, will allow you to move swiftly through time while all around you slows. This golden fleece has the power to deflect approaching weapons and thrust them back to those who deliver them. The Sisters' Temple is far above, Kratos. You must get back to the surface. The ashes of the phoenix. Only fire will set him free. Clotho weaves the thread of life for every mortal god and titan. Find your thread, and you will be able to control the mirrors of the fates, the source of their power, and use them as a gateway to return to the time when Zeus betrayed you. The power of the fates resides within these great mirrors. Find your thread, and you will be able to control the mirrors, and use them as a gateway to return to the time when Zeus betrayed you. Hidden deep within the spire lie the sisters. They control the threads of fate. Gain control of your thread, and you will be able to return to the moment when Zeus betrayed you. All is not lost, Kratos. You must go on. There is much at stake here. Victory favors you, Kratos. But you must grab hold of your destiny and command it. There is a war on the horizon, and we need you to lead us into battle. The death of Zeus. If you relent, Zeus will torment you still. He will not rest knowing you live. And when you die, his brother Hades will see that your soul is tortured for all eternity. You will have no rest until you destroy him. Take within you this fire that burned your beloved Sparta, 
Let it fuel your rage and hasten your steps towards destiny. The time to act is upon us, Kratos. This battle is just the beginning of a great war that is to come. Remember, Kratos, you have the power to control time itself. We have been expecting you, Ghost of Sparta. The gods are far too powerful for us to defeat now. Before the Age of the Twilight set upon the gods, a legend rose to claim his place among them. And even though Kratos sat on the throne as the new god of war, he was haunted by visions of his family, a family he himself murdered. But the hands of death could not defeat him. The sisters of fate could not control him. And on this day, the man, the legend, Kratos, will have his revenge. <laughs>